Hey, what's up guys? Uh, this lecture is going to be a little bit more difficult because we need to go over uh, some vocabulary, even more vocabulary. Yesterday we were talking about proteins, uh, the endoplasmic reticulum making proteins and lipids. So we need to figure out what those things are. We need to know about what solubility means and amino, amino acids. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, so what is an amino acid? Okay, well, an amino acid is a building block of protein. All right, so if you want to build a protein, you need to bring to the table a bunch of amino acids. Okay, there are 21 amino acids. There's technically 22, but uh, let's just say there's it, there's anywhere from 20 to 22, depending on who you ask and what, what field of biology you're in, uh, amino acids. That doesn't really matter. I don't care. We don't care how many there are. The only thing I want you to know is that there are enough amino acids that you can you can put you can hook them together in a nearly infinite number of ways to produce any protein you 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 want. Okay. So amino acids, think of them as like the smaller Legos, right? And then the proteins are the bigger structures made out of Legos. Okay, they are long chains of amino acids. So these are the building blocks and you hook these together and you start making chains of them and they start folding around and going in different areas. That's what a protein is. Okay. Uh, the, the, the shape of the protein will determine its function. Okay. And the, 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 the protein is, is, is merely dictated by the the sequence of amino acids that build build the, build up the chain in the first place. Okay, so amino acids building blocks of proteins. That's all you need to know. Okay, uh, I'm trying to give you guys just one example of a protein. How about an enzyme? An enzyme is a um, is a special protein that. Uh, essentially catalyzes a reaction or makes a reaction go faster. Um, there are enzymes in your gut, for example, that help break you, help uh, break food down. So whenever you eat meat, okay, soy, some plants, your body's getting a source of protein. You've probably seen protein powder, for example. Uh, you need protein in order to rebuild muscle tissue. So that's why you see bodybuilders uh, drinking lots and lots of protein because they wanna they want to get their muscles larger and to do so they need to drink a lot of protein okay so this is called a polypeptide chain this is the same thing as a protein okay so let's go back so we had amino acids are the building blocks of proteins right and this long chain is just a small little tiny chain inside of here okay so just think these are amino acids, right? These little spheres are amino acids, and as you link them together, you start to form chains called polypeptide chains. And if you keep going, a protein is made out of hundreds to thousands of these peptide chains. Okay, so that's the sequence. It goes amino acids, and then the amino acids build polypeptide chains, and then the polypeptide chains eventually build an entire protein. Okay, a protein can have tens, to hundreds to tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of amino acids. So proteins can be really, really quite large. Okay, I tried to give it to you in a different, in a different light here. You've got the amino acids, which are the building blocks. And if you string them together, you build these structures called peptides. And as the peptides wrap around uh, polypeptide chains, and as these peptides wrap around each other, they build structures called proteins. Okay, so that's all I'm going to give you guys for proteins for now. I want to even I want to move to another thing called uh, hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Uh, hydrophobic is a term to describe when something is not soluble in water. That's that's why it's uh, termed phobic. Okay, if you have a phobia of something, you like to stay away from it. Uh, if you know anyone with arachnophobia, they don't like spiders, for example. So they they have a phobia of spiders. So I want you to think of hydrophobic as uh, non-polar, 
That's what they call it in chemistry, nonpolar. So what is a hydrophobic compound? Well, it's just something that won't mix with water. That's what it means. That's what soluble means. Okay, so let's think of a hydrophobic material. Have you ever, you ever poured a, a glass of water and then poured in olive oil and seen what happens? You may notice that they don't mix at all. You could sit there and you could try to stir them really, really well, and they're still not gonna, they're still not gonna mix with each other very well. And the reason for that is because they don't, they, they have a thing called polarity, and it's probably, it's, it's. I'm gonna show you an example of polarity, polarity here in the lecture. Um, I don't really want to get into why that's so, but I just want you to know their turn, what they, what their names are for now. Okay. Uh, maybe near the end of the year we can actually talk about why things are polar or nonpolar. That would be actually pretty interesting. But right now, I want you to know hydrophobic means something that does not like water. Hydrophilic means something that does like water. So hydro means water, philic means they like it. So hydrophilic is something that likes water. That's literally what it means. Okay, so for example, think of something that uh, is soluble in water easily to uh, to dissolve in water. Uh, what about honey? Hi honey is a hydrophilic molecule, right? Why? Because if you go try and put some honey in some water and then stir it and you'll see the honey disappear. That's because it mixes well with, it mixes well or is soluble with, with water, okay? It's also called polar. I don't really want you to know nonpolar and polar right now. I do want you to know hydrophobic and hydrophilic. Okay, so hydrophobic materials, they don't like water, right? So fats, waxes, um, beeswax, you ever seen that? You can't get that to mix with water. Fats, oils, if you've ever cooked at home and seen the oils on your pan and put, the, put water in the pan and see the oil float on the surface, it's floating on the surface because hydrophobic materials do not like to mix with water okay so what are some hydrophilic materials well I said sh I notice I said honey and what do you think honey is made out of right it's made out of sugar okay sugar and salt are great examples of hydrophilic materials why because they mix really well in them if I take a little bit of a tablespoon of salt and I put it in some water, I can easily stir the water together and the salt disappears because it is, it is soluble or it mixes well. Soluble means mix well um, in chemistry. So sugar is another great one because you put a sugar cube in some water and it just disappears, but it hasn't disappeared, right? It's just dissolved. The sugar's still in there. It's just the molecules have now separated very, very well. So let's say we take a mystery substance and we mix it with some water. We don't know anything about the substance. We notice that the substance, the yellow substance, does not mix with the water and it creates a layer on top of the water. Is this mystery substance hydrophobic or hydrophilic? Well, it's not mixing with the water, so it has a phobia of the water, so it is hydrophobic. Okay, it does not mix well with the water. So, now for another term that we used the other day. What is a lipid? A lipid is just a fat, okay? It's a long, it's a, uh, for, for what, for, for what you, for all you know, just call a, call a lipid a fat, an oil. That's all lipids are. Um, they are not soluble in water, okay? So butter is a great example of a lipid. Wax, steroids, um, oils, okay, these things are lipids. Now, uh, why, who, why, should, why should I care about what a lipid is? Well, because it's going to be, it's going to, it's going to play a crucial role in in understanding the uh, um, the cellular membrane and actually how soap works. 
Okay, so remember, the cellular membrane is composed of these little small subunits, if you remember, they're called phospholipids. Does anyone, and does that ring a bell? I hope it does. Okay, and we're gonna figure out the how a hydrophobic and a hydrophilic property can be combined into one, one little molecule, like this phospholipid. Okay, so you remember, let's go back and see this thing on the right here that was in it see, see the phospholipid molecule it's this one little molecule and then the, the lipid bilayer is made out of quadrillions of them right okay now no, look up at the top right here it says the the head is hydrophilic hydrophilic means it likes water and the bottom tails are hydrophobic okay now the, this this is what the, chemi the this is what the chemical actually looks like if you were to draw it out in chemistry and may this may or may not mean anything to you but what's important it, the, is that it has a part of the molecule that likes water and it has a part of a mole of the molecule that does not like water okay this is super crucial and you remember what I said uh, like things like the dissolved like things so hydrophobic materials, are, will dissolve in um, in water, right? Hydrophobic materials will dissolve in lipids, right? So if you mixed olive oil and avocado oil, which are both lipids, they'd mix pretty well. Uh, if you mixed butter with, uh, you know, with with uh, some oil, they we, they would mix really well. Okay, so that's actually why these tails, these these tails on the on the on the bottom of this layer are attracted to the tails of this bottom layer you notice that the oils want to stick together and the things that are hydrophilic want to stay on the ends where the water is so let's actually let me see if i can help you explain to you the the how important this is by also showing you how soap works okay have you actually ever thought about how soap works? Uh, how does it actually remove dirt from your hands? Okay, well here's the thing. Dirt and oil are, are made up of hydrophobic materials, right? That means they don't dissolve well in water. Okay, and if you don't believe me, go work on your car outside, right? Get some oil and some grease and some lipids on your hands and then go and put water on them. The, they will not come off your hands, okay? So we need a soap molecule in order to do this. So soap molecules are just like phospholipids. They have a long hydrophobic chain. This is the long part right here. And this long part loves, it, it's, it loves uh, other lipids, okay? So again, remember these lipids love other lipids. So the lipids of this layer find each other and they sit there and they dance together. The reason why the reason why lipids dissolve other lipids and polars polar or excuse me hydrophilic com, uh, compounds dissolve other hydrophilic compounds is beyond your your chemical knowledge right now. So I wouldn't worry about that. What I do want you to know though, is that hydrophobic things dissolve other hydrophobic things and hydrophilic things like to dissolve other hydrophilic things. Okay, so you've got a hydrophobic chain on the end of your soap molecule, okay? It likes dirt, it likes lipids. And this part of the chain up here at the top is hydrophilic. It does not like lipids, it likes water. Okay, you, know, you might be asking, well, how, how, can, how can two properties exist on one molecule? Because they're bonded together. This, this area of the molecule is bonded to this area of the molecule. So they, they come hand in hand. This is, a, this is an actual soap molecule. So the soap literally is surrounding dirt and oil particles in little, in little, uh, little structures called my, uh, me cells or micelles. Okay, so the see this like see these little balloon looking things? That circle right there is this part right here, this COO minus NA. This is the part that loves water. 
Okay, well, water will come all over around this thing because this guy is going to be good friends with water. This end is this part right here, this string. This guy is a lipid. It's very, it's very hydrophobic. So it likes other hydrophobic things like grease. So the soap molecules will literally surround this grease particle. And as it does so, it's going to, it's going to allow this grease particle to be picked up by water and moved along by it. Okay. Uh, I hope this has kind of make, made a little bit of sense. For example, take a look at this picture right here. You've got an oil molecule, right? And forget, these are the soap molecules, but forget they're there. As water passes by, water and oil do not mix. So oil is just going to sit there. It doesn't want to move with water. But as soon as you, as soon as you manipulate oil to, to be dissolved by something that oil likes, which is another lipid, attached to something that water likes, then you basically put the oil inside of a little inside of a little uh, vehicle so that water can move it away. And that's how soap works. Well, anyway, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye bye.